wisdom of uncertainty and the empowerment of impermanence. I'm always curious to explore spiritual philosophies. I've discovered it can reinforce certain universal values that often run contrary to the way we live our westernized lives today. For instance, karma, rebirth, and impermanence are three foundational beliefs of Buddhism. The first two of these I've covered within our Twiglet Zone features and blogs, so I'll focus on the third aspect, which is impermanence. Impermanence tells us that change is a natural part of life, therefore not to be feared. However, our westernized programming and conditioning encourage us to fear change and seek safety. We've been trained to fear the unknown as it keeps us easier to control. We have become addicted to safety and comfort, and like many addictions, it leaves us feeling unfulfilled. This is because an obsession with safety and comfort overrides our connection to that vibrant energy field that represents that field of all possibilities. To delve into this a little deeper, there are countless examples of where extreme change has happened in the lives of people, often with hardship associated, and yet, the victims will often tell you that they never felt more alive than when life's safety net was pulled away from under them. It could have been a battlefield situation, a natural disaster, or anything that shakes us meaningfully out of our safe existence. This does not mean they were having fun, in the conventional sense at least, but the enforced uncertainty, often along with that sense of community camaraderie or examples of selfless humanitarian acts, creates aliveness. So the question is, do we really need that safety net in the first place? This part of Buddhist philosophy aligns perfectly with universal law. The eighth law is the law of perpetual transmutation of energy. This law tells us that energy is always moving and always changing, and we, and everything around us, is made of energy. And then, the eleventh universal law is the law of rhythm. This law tells us that nothing is permanent. If we turn to the seven spiritual laws of success, the sixth law is the law of detachment. Amongst many other things, it teaches us of the wisdom of uncertainty. Uncertainty is where pure creativity and freedom lies. This law talks to the fun of life in the field of all possibilities and the joy of spontaneity. Meanwhile, living life within a rigid framework of safety and certainty narrows down the field of possibilities. We simply regurgitate the same safe path, yet miss out on a key ingredient that we incarnated here on Earth for. When we embrace uncertainty, we witness all the possibilities, the excitement, and we can seize the opportunity around every problem. The rigid framework of safety that we are encouraged to accept as our reality keeps us small, living a half-life. Why are we encouraged to think this way? The answer is, because as a population, we are much easier to control when we are taught to be fearful of change. A rigid framework is also where much of the religious doctrine takes us also. Once again, narrowing our field of possibilities, it is a control mechanism. Now, here is a really important point. We are living in a time of great change. What we have witnessed in recent times through the pandemic and other control agendas is the tip of the iceberg. Over the coming decades, those who are unable to live with impermanence or are unwilling to embrace the wisdom of uncertainty could find life very challenging. However, I believe that when the safety net is removed, many will rise to the occasion. It is a natural ability that has lain dormant as a result of our deliberately misaligned programming. It is the nature of man to rise to greatness if greatness is expected of him, said John Steinbeck. Much of this rising to greatness aspect was covered in our Elevated Planet blog, Ain't Nobody Here But Us Chickens. Here is an extract. It's like we're all chickens on a battery farm with the opportunity to go free range. Some of us chickens will refuse to believe that a world exists outside of our pen. So the question you have to ask yourself is, what sort of chicken am I? To cope with the forthcoming changes, new awareness and consciousness needs to rebirth on the planet. We have to awaken from our mortal slumber. Presently, there are those who have set out to dampen down the evolution of humanity, while there are others who are trying to free it. Tumultuous times await as this war for consciousness plays out, as play out it must. 
we don't yet know what shape this great change is going to take. It could be the anticipated false flag alien invasion by the powerful illegal secret government warned about by Dr. Stephen Greer. If this transpires, our skies could be filled with man-made alien reproduction vehicles, reverse engineered from downed ET vehicles. This will be made all the more convincing by genetically manufactured ET beings who will appear to threaten mankind. Evidence of and plans for this false flag threat has been known for decades. However, this same illegal secret government also control the mainstream media and social media. These media assets can be used to promote significant fear just as if the threat was real. And the threat will be real. It is just that it would be a man-made threat rather than our real galactic cousins. Many people believe that what they see through the media sources is real. They would be highly vulnerable to this subterfuge. Or could the forthcoming changes be evidence in another pandemic? Imagine if the COVID-19 control agenda was just a dress rehearsal for what was to follow. Such things were prophesied within the work of author and quantum healing regression therapist Dolores Cannon. Dolores' work is a recommended read for anyone who may be seeking enlightenment. Or maybe these changes will be reflected in natural disasters. The sixth universal law is the law of cause and effect, which says that every action has an equal and opposite reaction. Given the recent level of planetary abuse when the pendulum swings back the other way, seems there could be quite a deficit to repay to Mother Earth, so we should brace ourselves. So here's some historic background on the control agenda. As I understand it, humanity was interfered with over 10,000 years ago, placing a cap at around 20% of our full potential. All sources of information are made available upon request. Following the Atlantis Cataclysm, mankind was dumbed down from the 12 DNA strand human matrix of that era down to the current 2 DNA strand human matrix. My suspicion is that this was the cap that was referred to. According to the work of Dolores Cannon, some have since been upgraded back to the 12 strand matrix in readiness for the new Earth. And I say that just in case you're curious and you wish to count how many you have. Entering the era of the new Earth and the awakening of consciousness, we are finally seeing the unlocking of the past interference of 10,000 years ago. However, not everybody will be ready for the shift to the new higher frequency energies. We each have a choice, although I expect the decision to be made at a soul level rather than by our conscious mind. At a soul level, we understand whether we are ready to ascend to a higher vibrational dimension or whether we are better served continuing our journey at the third dimensional level. Either way, the behaviors and ways of being that we have been accustomed to, and to be fair, some have thrived within this framework, are about to have a metaphorical earthquake move through them one way or another. As the changes start to build, awareness of the following point is important. If you find yourself living in fear, you will be taking fear into this change scenario. Fear is a low vibration energy and is destabilizing. Fear is a human construct that enables others to control us, but you always have a choice as to how you respond to anything. The fear programming and desire for safety have been instilled in us from an early age, so to be fair, it's not always easy to switch off. The time ahead has been foretold for thousands of years and counterintuitive as it may seem, everything is exactly as it should be, turmoil and all. This is because we are at the end of a 26,000 year cycle and the beginning of the next. This was the reason the Mayan calendar ended in 2012. Also, for those with an interest in the Bible, you will probably be aware that the New Earth is foretold in the Book of Revelations chapters 21 and 22. What is the New Earth moving to, you ask? Well, in anticipation of the Age of the Golden Race that takes place during the Age of Aquarius, we are ridding ourselves of negative energy. The Age of Aquarius foretells a shift beyond technological and medical innovations and calls for a better way of working with each other and a greater sense of community spirit. In anticipation of this, our planet is elevating to a higher dimension. To follow it there, our consciousness or energetic vibration has to elevate too. For those who choose to elevate with the planet, all you need to do is embrace the opportunity to immerse yourselves in the high frequency emotions listed in the ascending section of the emotional spiral. 
There will be those that cannot escape their programming and conditioning and find themselves stuck in the denser energies. Regardless of the direction any of us choose, there is no judgment required. There is no right or wrong answer. There is simply a choice, albeit an unconscious choice. Remember, the wisdom of uncertainty and the embracing of impermanence enable you to feel the excitement of change rather than fearing our loss of safety. As Buddhist wisdom tells us, change is a natural part of life, therefore not to be feared. And as our sixth spiritual law of success teaches us, uncertainty is where pure creativity and freedom lies. It allows us to access the field of all possibilities and live in the joy of spontaneity. What will you choose?